Holy cow, did you see that? <laughs> the hearing this morning, the surprise January 6th hearing this morning. Wow. In case you don't know, I'm Carolyn, and welcome back to another episode of As I See It. A couple things that I just wanted to uh, talk to you about. I know that most of you probably watch the hearings, and most of you are probably just like... A um, couple of things that have come to mind for me are... Number one, I'm not surprised. Most of us, and I keep I keep saying this, you know, over and over again, those of us who begged people we knew not to vote for him knew that this was a potential outcome of his presidency. We knew that. We knew it. I mean, we knew he's a megalomaniacal, narcissistic con man who does not really care about the country or Americans. He only cares about himself. That's it. We knew that. And especially, I think, the longer he was in office, or maybe even in the beginning, sorry about that, maybe even in the beginning, we recognized that he would do whatever it took to stay in power. So this really is no surprise. The testimony this morning, though, while it's not surprising that he was willing to go to any lengths, it's validating. I think it's validating. We knew we knew he knew. We knew he planned it. We knew that he wanted this to happen. And the testimony this morning is validating. Uh, so a couple of the biggest takeaways for me, and then I'm going to talk about, at the end, I'm going to talk about the DOJ and why the DOJ still might not choose to indict. And that's a big one, but I'm going to talk about that at the end. So a couple of the big takeaways from this morning's hearing, and in case you didn't watch it, it was an aide of Mark Meadows, the chief of staff, uh, the former guy's chief of staff. And not only was she firsthand witness to many conversations and pleadings and uh, communications and all kinds of things, uh, she, she was, she heard the former president, say things on January 6th. So what did we learn this morning, in case you haven't seen it yet, or this afternoon? We learned, number one, that they knew days and days and days in advance that there was a potential for violence on that day. The president knew there was a potential for violence on that day. Number two, they knew before he went to speak at the ellipse, before he went to speak at the rally, they knew the crowd was armed and dangerous. They knew it. Mark Meadows was told. The president was told. They knew it. And in fact, another big bombshell is that there are these uh, metal detectors that everybody has to be screened. They have to go through before they could go into the ellipse for the rally. When the former guy got there, of course, what was he upset about? Crowd size. The crowd's not big enough. We need to let more people in. And everybody explained to him, all the people who want to be in are in. We can't let more people in or, or a lot of people are choosing to stay outside because they don't want to have to go through the metal detectors. They don't want Secret Service confiscating their weapons. You know what Trump said? I don't care. Let them in anyway. They're not here for me. They're not going to hurt me. It's not me they're here for. Let them in anyway. He wanted, he was, he was willing to let armed people in his vicinity, into the ellipse, the secured area of the ellipse, because he knew they weren't there for him. He knew they were armed with spears and guns and knives and even AR-15s, some people are saying, or she said, actually. No, 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 it wasn't her. I don't know if it was her. There was a uh, a uh, Capitol Police recording uh, in which they saw people in the crowd with AR-15s. And Trump said, I don't care. They're not here for me. The whole issue around him wanting to go to the Capitol with the crowd... White House counsel said, no, 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 this will open a whole can of worms uh, for legal issues. If you go, it'll be obstruction of justice and all this stuff. He didn't care. He wanted to go. He wanted to go be a part of the crowd to the Capitol. 
So that's all a little more complex and complicated. I hope that you have watched the hearings or you will watch the hearings. Uh, the other, the other big takeaway for me was that when all of the White House staff were trying to get Mark Meadows to tell the president after his speech to call off the, cr the, the crowd breaking into the Capitol, Meadows said he doesn't want to do anything about it. And Meadows was completely disinterested. Mark, Mark Meadows was part of this. And, uh, and the biggest thing is that he said, she heard him say, this aide heard him say, the president, the president of the United States, when he was told that the crowd was threatening to lynch the, his vice president, you know what Trump said? He deserves it. He didn't go, he didn't go out immediately and stop the crowd. He not, I mean, not even like within an hour. I mean, he did not try to stop the crowd. He said he deserves it. The president of the United States is supposed to be the president of all people, not just himself, not just his supporters. Certainly, he is not supposed to stand by while there is a legitimate threat against our country, our Congress, our vice president, against the people of our country. He was willing, he would have been okay. He would have sat back while they lynched his vice president. This is the guy people are still defending. He said, yep, he deserves it. Watching TV. This was heard firsthand. This isn't hearsay. This is the guy we're dealing with. This is the guy we all knew he was. Those of us who begged people not to vote for him. We knew this is who he was. We knew it. So I heard something interesting on uh, the news the other day. I don't know what I was listening to. An int from an attorney about the Justice Department and their lack of action so far. Of course, we're seeing all of this testimony. We're watching the hearings. We have heard a lot of, he did this, he did that. We suspect he did this. We suspect he did that. And we're all like wanting to wring Merrick Garland's neck. Why are you not indicting? Why aren't, is there an investigation? Why, aren't, what's going on? I mean, he should be arrested by now. And of course, us non-attorneys are Americans. I mean, we're, we're concerned Americans and we're very emotional about this. This attorney I heard interviewed made a really good valid argument and a couple things that I thought worth bringing up to you as well, because I think they're really good things to think about and consider and maybe help talk ourselves down from the why aren't you doing anything and how, um, the tendency to, to stop having faith in our judicial system and our government, which is at a low time, uh, all time low in credibility with what the Supreme Court has done. So this is what I heard from an attorney. In order to bring a case, you have to know, like an attorney, before they bring a case or, you know, we've seen this. Actually, we saw this with with the former guy bringing all of these <laughs> these fake election fraud claims to the court. The court isn't going to hear it unless there's evidence, unless he thinks there is a solid case uh, proving that there's fraud. So this is what's going on with the Justice Department. There is a lot of hearsay there to this, you know, up until today, there's been a lot of hearsay. There's been a lot of secondhand this. There has been a lot of talking about this happened and that happened. But the challenge of the Justice Department or any attorney is whether or not they can prove it. And think about where we are right now as a country. Imagine he jumps the gun. Okay, I have, you know, because he's... Maybe he also is getting emotionally entangled like the rest of us are in this and wanting to see results and wanting to see him pay for what it appears he has done. The traitor, treasonous coup attempt that he attempted. But as a, a prosecutor, as the top you know, prosecutor in the, in the land, Merrick Garland has to make sure he's got a rock solid case before he chooses to indict. Because here's the big clincher, I think. Imagine if he doesn't win. I think this is a really, really big thing that we all have to re remember 
instead of thinking that he's a lame duck, that he's not doing his job, maybe we need to realize that he's being strategic and he's being smart, not only in his job as the uh, chief prosecutor or chief attorney and, you know, for the country, but as an American, maybe too. What if he jumps the gun because of public pressure, because of emotion, because it appears that he's a treasonous traitor con man who tried to overthrow the government, but then they get down to it, they get to the court case, they get to the trial, and the evidence falls short. What is going to happen to us if he loses? I think that's a huge consideration. Look what happened with the Mueller report. Again, the Mueller report did not exoner uh, exonerate the former president. But because he didn't end up in jail over it, the right was able to run with that lack of charging him with anything and say, look, it's just more proof that the, the left wing is just trying to sabotage him, is just trying to, it's a witch hunt, it's a witch hunt. Imagine if that happened again. Imagine if Merrick Garland loses because of lack of evidence. I mean, it appears to us lay people that there's plenty of evidence out there, but you know how courts work. You know how attorneys and judges, and I don't know if this would go to a jury or a grand jury. He has to make sure every single I is dotted perfectly and T is crossed. He needs to make sure without a shadow of a doubt, he can convict or it's going to be a shit storm for our country. Right? I mean, it's already going to be a shit storm for our country, even if he wins and he is able to convict. The Trump supporters are going to be screaming that it was a witch hunt and that it was all faked anyway. But imagine if he loses. I think that's a really, it's, I have thought about that every day since I heard that interview with a top attorney. That that's a huge gamble. I know that, again, a lot of us are emotional. This is our country. They tried to steal. That's how I see it. They tried to steal my vote away from me. They tried to steal our country out from underneath us for some maniac, for his ego. And so, yeah, we're emotional about it. And to us, it might be like, okay, there's evidence already. But an experienced prosecutor, an experienced attorney looks at what's there. We don't know what else is behind the scenes and says, okay, it, it, but is there enough to convict beyond a shadow of a doubt? I just wanted to give you that little piece of thought, something to think about. I don't know, or any of you attorneys, I would love to hear your take on it, uh, what you think about this. Uh, but how I see it, I think that this attorney has a very legitimate argument as to why Merrick Garland has not chosen to uh, indict yet and why, I hate to say it, but maybe he never will. I hope not. I hope that there is enough evidence for him to be able to make a rock solid case against the former guy and his people, because it seems very clear to us what his intentions were, and that was to overthrow our government and stay in power like every shithole country third world dictator has done throughout the history of government. So that's how I see it. What do you think? Leave your thoughts below. And wow, I almost want to watch the hearings again. I'll see you soon. Thank you all so much for being here. Have a good day. Bye.